start. Uh, yes, Kirti, we can start. Yes. Proceed, please. A very good morning to all of you. I, Kirti, teacher scholar from Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Central University of Punjab, welcome you all on the behalf of oh. organizing committee of FTP in the last day of two-week mm -hmm. faculty development program in data science and scientific mm -hmm. competing. We hope you have been gaining valuable insights and experiences throughout the journey. Dr. Ashok Kumar Patek, sir, from Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Central University of Punjab, Bathinda, India, is the resource person for our today's session. Sir will deliver the lecture on exploratory data analysis using R. The chairperson for today's session is Dr. Shelly Verma, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Dolatram College, University of Delhi. Before starting our today's session, I request Dr. Shelly Verma, ma'am, for formal introduction to our today's resource person. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So good, uh, good morning, everyone. Today is the last day of this two weeks faculty development program on data uh, science and scientific computing. Today, we are honored to have Dr. Ashok Kumar uh, Pathak as speaker of this session. I welcome you, sir, to this session. And before proceeding further, I would like to have a brief introduction of our speaker, Dr. Pathak, sir. So Dr. Pathak, sir, is an assistant professor in Department of Mathematics and Statistics at Central University of Punjab since 2016. He did his PhD uh, in statistics from IIT Bombay. He also worked as research associate uh, for one year at IIT Bombay. His areas of interest include regression analysis, copulas and dependence modeling, statistical inference, probability theory and stochastic processes. Dr. Pathak has published around 16 research papers in journals of international reputes. He has carried out many research projects supported by DSC Serve and Central University of Punjab. He also participated in various conferences and workshops in India and abroad. Today, Dr. Pathak is going to talk about exploratory data analysis using R. Now, without taking much time of, you, of yours, sir, I hand over the session to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Verma. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, before starting my session, uh, I would like to know one thing uh, from participants. Uh, why we are dealing with the data science nowadays? Why it is becoming the more important? What is your opinion? What is your view? So could anyone share why data science is, science is needed nowadays? Because this is the last session. So you have heard about a lot of the data science, data science, what is the difference between the data science, mathematics, data science, statistics, data science, computer science. What is the difference? What you are understanding about this one? And why exploratory data analysis is required? I am sharing my screen. But uh, meanwhile, I would like to know about this one. If anyone have the insight about this one, so please share your view. Why we need the data science? This is very... Uh, sir, because of the advent of technology and uh, as we see that like technology is uh, uh, growing exponentially and because of the technology the data is also increasing exponentially so the data is increasing but to get the meaning uh, out of that data we we need the data scientist to to get to analyze those data and get some something meaningful okay any other because this, this is a very fundamental question it's this question will let you know what is the difference between the running data and the fixed data and why it is uh, more advanced than the statistics so please anyone good 
मॉर्निंग सर यस सर प्लीज सर टू अरेंज अ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा नाउ डेज देयर आर टू मेनी डेटा आर अवेलेबल इन एवरी फील्ड टू अरेंज ऑल द डेटा इन इन के प्रेजेंट जो स्टैटिस्टिक आई थिंक दैट स्टैटिस इन स्टैटिस्टिक वी यूज डेटा इन थ्योरेटिकल कांसेप्ट इन प्रैक्टिकल कांसेप्ट एंड at the time of statistics uh, there is a i will uh, uh, we will use uh, theoretical as well as some uh, some amount of data but nowadays uh, there is a ter- in terabyte so to handle yeah. uh, to handle uh, these data uh, we uh, we have to uh, study data science yeah Basically. because nowadays data is flowing every yes, at every second every moment fraction of second data is coming So yes, on the sir. basis of in the statistics, we are dealing with a you can say that a, a fixed kind of data. You have the fixed dimension, fixed uh, size of the data, fixed format of the data, and then you are dealing. Okay. But nowadays, yes. this is the advancement of the statistics techniques. It data data science sir, is not only uh, the statistics. I want to say something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please, please. Statistics please. is also involved. Uh, the reason was we can use uh, the tools, the methods. the statistics technology to uh, generate that kind of the data actually requirement which needed or we can say organized in a proper yeah so that's why we required the statistics over there ah uh, so data science is not only the uh, only one branch it is comprised of at least three branches in my opinion okay it consist uh, computer science it requires some mathematical sciences we got mathematical sciences required for the modeling purposes and the statistical sciences required for the data analysis and statistical yes so it is combination of data science not only one subject this is combination of three subjects so if anyone become uh, willing to become a data scientist so at least he has to be basic knowledge about the other three things it should be more efficient in the computer uh, operation it should be more uh, efficient in the mathematical operation as well as he should be efficient in the statistical tools and interpretation techniques so noise is coming sir hello hello yes sir you are audible Yeah, yeah. Participants, please mute yourself. So now we are going to deal with the exploited data analysis in our techniques. So this is nothing. This is the generalization of your. You can that uh, you can say that uh, in the statistics, you know the about uh, descriptive statistics. Anyone heard about the descriptive statistics? Descriptive st. the main motive of the descriptive major or statistical statistics is that one ki we have to extract the basic information about the data at the very preliminary level theek hai so as the data science is uh, becoming the more fascinating statistical data analysis is just analysis of the data uh, our uh, that um, it is descriptive statistics it involves the graphical techniques it involves the uh, mathematical techniques and it also involves the interpretation of the several things so we will proceed one by one so see this one theek okay. why we need the what is the eda techniques eda exploited data analysis is nothing but this is a eda theek okay. so it analyzes the data using the bayesian technique it uh, it is used to discover trend and pattern or check the assumption with the help of statistical summary and graphical representation so why we use eda detection of mistakes this is the first advantage checking our presumptions in the several uh, statistical model or this one Det- uh, preliminary selection of the ap- appropriate models detecting the relationship among the variable assessing the rough size and detecting the relationship between the expected and outcome variables so before making any models first what is our motive first our motive is that one we have to deal with any data first we have to get the basic information about the data then we will think about which models we are going to make or which models we are going to discover so what is your first uh, suppose data is given to you what is your first opinion what 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 is what information you will get from the data suppose in the your class uh, 
marks of students are given in the according to their roll numbers what will do what is your opinion what you will get information from the, this data suppose you have the 10 students in your classes and 10 had student have different different cgpa but if you will put the data in the discarded manner you will not get any basic information about the your whole class so what will do you will arrange the data in the form of either tabular form or the ascending form or the descending form so it will give you raw data will have a discarded information but if you will arrange the that data in the either increasing order or decreasing order then you will get the information about the your class performance or student performance okay so this is advantage of the this is the basics second technique is that one if you have the bivariate data so before making any model or making that one you have to plot the data on the x and y axis x and y axis will give you your scatter plot what is the main, main motive of scatter plot before making any models if you are plotting any scatter plot between the variables then it will give you basic information about the dependence between the data okay Suppose you are dealing with the regression analysis, so why you are going to choose the uh, simple linear regression or the exponential regression or logistic regression? So a scatter plot will give you information about that one. Otherwise, if you are if you are just uh, suppose your data is dependent, uh, you are dealing with the uh, simple linear regression model, so then your results. Hello. Then your then your result will be misleading and incorrect. So what are the techniques used in the EDA? Okay. Most EDA techniques are graphical in nature with few quantitative techniques. The particular graphical techniques implied in here are often quite simple and consist of various, te uh, various techniques. Plotting of the raw data such as histogram and probability plots. So it is exploited data I see nothing but this is the just one kind of your basic graphical representation of data and basic graphical representation of data will give you basic information about the data. And on the basis of that one, we are we will make a, some models in the more complex form and it will give a more appropriate results. Plotting simple statistics such as mean plots and standard deviation plots and plots are also a part of EDA techniques. And these are very useful in statistical analysis because mean plots will give you the information about the, where the data is cut, whole the data is centered about the mean and a standard deviation plot will give you the uh, information about the variability in the data and box plot will give you just the, the it, it is nothing but this is giving the sometimes it is de dealing with the median uh, about that one and sometimes it is dealing with the mean so this is the and uh, where we can perform the uh, uh, idiot techniques so since this is the graphical representation, all the statistical tool are the, you can say that all the, those who are having the uh, graphical representation or graphical uh, softwares, you can perform the EDA in the, that one, like the, you can perform the EDA in the Excel, you can perform EDA in the MATLAB, you can perform EDA in the Python, and you can perform EDA in the R techniques, uh, R software. But nowadays Python and R are the more popular because this, these are the open softwares and a lot of inbuilt techniques are available in this one so without writing your road code just using the packet or just simple commands you can make a more fascinating graphical representation of your complex data okay so in our language we are going to perform ed under two broad classifications okay what is the classification first one is the descriptive statistics what is the descriptive, descriptive statistics in the statistics? Anyone have idea? Hello? What is the descriptive statistics and why it is need, needed? Hello? Hello, I am Why we need descriptive statistics? Yes, yes. Sometimes actually we have actually we have the uh, large data and sometimes we don't have all the information available in all the columns. So to fill uh, the unavailable uh, data, uh, we we require the descriptive statistics like yeah. we can use the mean, median, mode, or interquartile range. Yeah, that, that is really fine. Okay, that is really good. Okay, this is the main motive because if you have the large uh, class of data, a large number of data, so you cannot print the all the whole the data, but on the basis on the on the average. On, on the mean or median or plot or interqualified plot, 
at least you will get the some basic information about the data. So descriptive statistics will give you basic information. And what are the graphical techniques? What are the graphical, uh, that one? It will include the histogram plots, box plot, ply plots. There are several plots, leaf plots. So this will give you, there are two types of, one is the descriptive. In the descriptive, you will get the numerical values, but in the graphical representations, uh, have you seen that one, the, your, um, uh, your economical data is represented in the forms of graphical, or your the, uh, that cricket data is represented in the forms of, so graphical representation, nothing, but this is a very simple form or format of the data. And only looking at the graph, you can at least conclude about something basic information about the data. So therefore, these two, these two techniques are required. EDA, EDA is just, you can say that synonyms of this one, there's nothing, nothing new, just we, just we are using the fascinating name of the data science in place of the, all the combination of mathematics, statistics and mathematical sciences. In the similar manner, we are using the expected data analysis, a fascinating name of the descriptive statistics and combination of the graphical methods. How to perform EDA in R. So are you aware about the R techniques or R software? Hello. Oh, yes. both, uh, do you have any basic knowledge about R techniques, R software? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Everyone? Uh, sir, R is, uh, R is an open source software and it is used in uh, maximum time for data science. And uh, uh, that, yes. No, people are, uh, those who participants are here, they are familiar uh, about the R. Otherwise, we can so demonstrate here how we will make the plot, these plots. No, sir, please uh, mention some. Okay, okay. Yes, so, uh, in place of uh, going theoretically, we will also demonstrate here, okay? So, this involves exploring the data sets in three ways. First one is the summarizing data set using the discovery statistics. This will give a numerical values. We are writing data set using the charts and normalizing the data sets. So graphical representation is essential. Uh, why we need the graphical representation? Uh, essential for uh, visually conveying pattern and trends in the data. Suppose you are plotting the data science, uh, the time series, so what will you get? Just plotting the time series data, you will get the more information about the time series data. You will get the signality, you will get the uh, variability in the data, a lot of information, just only plotting the time series data, you will get. So this is advantage of the graphical representation. Enhance understanding and interpretation of the complex data set. Suppose you have the complex data set, so only giving the graphical representation, it will give at least some information about the data, and that will be more useful in our further study. So various method like histogram, scatter plot, and pie charts are the form of the, this kind of uh, representation of this complex data. Each technique is chosen based on the nature of data and the insights sorted. So how we will choose this one? It will depend upon the nature of data and our requirements. Histogram display frequency distribution, highlighting data patterns, box plots provides a concise summary of the data, central tendency and spreadness. Scatter plot service the relationship between two variables. So what are the, what is the histogram? Histogram will plot will be the give the frequency. What do you mean by frequency? Suppose a data is repeated in the several times. Suppose uh, you are conducting experiment and you are getting the hit three times, you are getting the tail five times in out of this one. So frequency means the repetition, repetition of the same uh, ex uh, experiment and obtaining the same outcome at the same time. Suppose what is the frequency of the head? Frequency of head is the three and frequency of tail is the five. So just plotting the frequency about this one, you will get the information about the, uh, this is the frequency data and you, we can plot it, it as a, using a uh, frequency uh, histogram plots. What is the box plot? This plot will give you the central tendency where the data is concentrated. Central tendency means the point around which the data is scattered. So using the box plot, you will get the information about this one. Scatter plots reveal the relationship. The scatter plots will give you the relationship where our data is linear related, non-linear related, exponential related. So this, this is the usefulness of the this scatter plot. Line graphs track the change in the variable one time showing the trends. So this is the line uh, graphs. This is used in the time series analysis. Bar chart and pie charts compare uh, charts compare and represent the proportion. 
so this is used for the and by pie chart and bar charts are the more useful in the you can see that nowadays in the uh, cricket are in the your all financial data okay usefulness of listing correct data and making data driven comparison so these are the useful of the so what is the pie chart pie chart this is visualizing of root and relative frequency so, so since its name is the pie chart so it should be looks like a circular pie chart theek okay? hai circular representing the segment of each category segment size determined by relative frequency reflected in angle and different value depicted as a colored slice and inclusion of label and correspondence numerical value will give you this one so this is the syntax of the r so suppose uh, i am also showing this one uh, let me just show me syntax so suppose you are willing to plot any data uh, to make a pie chart of any data so x is the what is the syntax for uh, making a pie chart in r so pi just to type the pi begin the parenthesis this one brackets x is your data labels you can give the labels of x axis y axis uh, sorry uh, labels okay uh, describe the slice this will give the slice radius means the radius of the your circle and main means the what is the heading of the main color you can give the and clockwise or anti clockwise it will give you the this one so using this Uh, syntax you can make a pie chart in the r so see this this is given the following data shows the agriculture production in india during a certain year construct the pie chart of the given data sets so what is the reason food grain rice production in the million tons so right 57 million tons is product uh, produced in one uh, year Which is a seventy-six million, and what is that? This creates this is thirty-eight. Pulse is the nineteen, and sugar cane is fifty-five. So what is that? Our data X is nothing but a fifty-seven, seventy-six, thirty-eight, nineteen, and fifty-five. So what we will do? We will uh, using this data set, we will make a pie charts. So this pie chart will look like this one thing. So what we will do in the R? We will do the R M list. This one library. plot tricks you you can use the plot tricks in the 3d this will give the 3d pie chart theek okay? hai otherwise uh, you will not get the 3d pie chart you will give the only two pie, 2d pie charts theek okay? hai food grains so you can give the label c equals to rice wheat this one pulse sugar cane and what is its value its value p per million this one turn c equals to uh, c for this is for the combination here suppose you are billing to date uh, enter any data in the r so you have to write within the c c for the combining c for combining this is used for the combining data set so this within the inverted comma set it is the character and if you are not putting the inverted comma then it will give you the numerical value okay so this is our the character value because it its name and this is its numerical value percentage now will what will do we will do the round the we will convert it in the percentage so what will pmt means this given data set divided by 100 into sum of this one and it will give you percentage now you can give the uh, color of this is uh, is slice so we are giving the red for the rice blue for the wheat white yellow for this one all the uh, pulse we are giving the green and for sugar cane we are giving the this one so we we will make the pie chart of this one pi pmt labels pi percent radius equals to 0.7 and many the pie chart of production of this one and color is the colors and we are giving the clock by tickets so what will give we will give you that month so you can see that the the whole production uh, rice is what 22.7 percent uh, 23.7 percent and wheat is the Wheat is the thirty-one point zero two percent. Pulse is the seven point seven six percent. Sugar cane is fifteen point five one percent. So out of the whole production of a country, you can by using this plot, you can uh, at least give the get the basic information that how much which crop is contributing in the total production. So this is the basic information. This this is the pie chart. now you can make this pie chart in this form so pie earlier what it was the only the pie 
so if you are just only putting the pi so it is giving it is coming like the 2d dimension but if you will use the 3d pi so what will pi 3d so pmt labels pi percentage this one the same thing so it will give you 3d slash so it, it it is looking 3d 3d picture hello yes sir this is this is 3d picture na yes sir ha huh. so this is giving the basic information about the, your data so what is the what is the information based on the above uh, pie chart we can say that agriculture production of the wheat is 31.02% this is the maximum and the production of the pulse is the 7.76% this is the minimum production so out of that data the big uh, complex data you can at least uh, uh correct uh, categorize that which is the maximum contributing which is the minimum contributing which which production is the maximum which production is the least then this is the this one and the second highest production is the rise 22 uh, 23.27% so we can conclude uh, on the basis of this chart we can at least get, get the basic information about the data now this is the bar chart so this is utilizing and compare it will like to co comparing category with the at least one categorical or discrete variable so the, where is the category okay then we will use bar charts each bar uh, signify a summary value of the discrete table with longer bar indicates the highest value and the summary value can encompass count sum means and standard deviation it could be anything of this one okay also refer to a bar graphs or bar plots is a data visualization so you can see that this one what is the syntax for uh, bar plot in the r so what is the r syntax bar plot h is our data data vector or matrix x is the x label x axis y is the y label main is the main names dot argo you can put this here is a vector of names having the same number of the value either input variable to describe the meaning of each bar and color you can also give the color of the this one so this is our syntax for creating any bar plot in using the data so suppose this is the data uh, this is example now consider this example annual sales in the logs of rs pharmaceutical firm for 6 years 95 to 2000 are given below so we here we are given the data what is the year 95 96 97 98 99 Five years data is given, or uh, six years data is given, and this is the annual sales in the lakhs. So, fifteen lakhs, twenty-five lakhs, twenty-seven lakhs, twenty-eight lakhs, at twenty-six lakhs, and twenty-six point six lakhs. So, now we have to make the bar plot of these data sets. What we will do? So, what we will do? Just see nothing but this is the character in the year. So, we have to plot on the x-axis. So 95 in the uh, this is character argument, character argument 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and this one. And annual sales is just a combination of the these values of so 15, 25, this one. Okay. So this is the our year. This is our annual sales. We can make a sale uh, each year. Can be we can make as a different color. So first uh, 95 we are making as a red color. 96 we are making as a blue color. So 97 we are making as a green color. So 98 we are making as a black color. And ninety nine yellow and this one. So bar plot annual sales this one and you can give the name of the this one. So this bar chart of the annual sales of pharmaceutical firm it will comes at the main title of this one. And the x axis you can give the name of this one. X axis what year? Y axis is nothing but annual sales in the lakhs of this one. So y axis is this one. X axis is the year. So just running this one and y uh, year and you fill colors it will give you. The color for otherwise, if you will not give the colors, and then it will give the black and white some in the dotted forms. So from his this diagram, what you are getting information from this one, we are getting which is the maximum in the 1998. We are getting what is the maximum production? Okay, uh, maximum sale. What is the 28 lakhs? So, so from this, this is giving the information about the data. So from the above bar start, we can see that the sales of the pharmaceutical firms increase. From ninety-five to ninety-eight, so every years we it is increasing. Ninety-five, ninety-six increasing, ninety-seven it is increasing, ninety-eight it is increasing. But 
in the 99 it is decreasing and and 2000 is also decreasing compared to uh, 98 but in compared to the 99 it is increasing so this is the basic information about the data using the bar chart now we are making the histogram hello so applied for continuous measurement so which kind of data we will use here so uh, with the continuous arg uh, arguments to grab the distribution identify the outliers each bin is the in the histogram is a feature of bars indicating the count or percentage of the observation falling within the bins and it resembles this uh, st uh, stem only plot in, in its subjective visualization the data so you see this one this is the syntax for the histogram so what is the histogram syntax in the r hist h i s t if just you put the data and if you write the hist within the up to outside the bracket it will automatically create a histogram plot but suppose you are making to make it more fascinating and more informative so b is the data vector containing the numerical value main is the main title of the y x is the x level y is the y level and x limit y limit you can you can uh, restrict your uh, graph size and break you can break, break is used for the this parameter you to with up each bar so you so how much breadth um, uh, of this uh, bar you can make it okay and color and border so you can also make the border of the different sizes okay so see that this example so marks obtained by 16 student in exam are given below so represent it is a through a appropriate graphical charts so marks is given by this one this is a 60 uh, observation since the data uh, given data is a continuous scale here histogram is more suitable for the knowing the frequency of student obtaining mark in the exam so see this one so what is the data the data is given histogram x level this one and you will get the this one so how much marks most of students are getting what is information about the what you are getting information about the, the this uh, histogram plots what is your observation around for, uh, for, uh, around 15 students have got uh, 25 marks out yeah maximum Maximum fourteen, fourteen, fifteen students have got. Yeah, twenty-four marks, twenty-five marks. Yeah, yeah. And what? Who? Uh, how many my students are getting the list marks? And uh, uh, the five. That's the uh, number of students. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, at least two. Two or three. Yeah, two or one or two. It's looking that if you will make the more discrete scale, then it will more visualize. So in place of the zero, five, ten, we can is make it is more described like the one, two, three, four, five. It can be okay. Okay. So uh, we see that from the diagram, yes. the, the number of students is one. Uh, is one is one. Five who got the between the twenty to twenty-five, and the minimum of the number of students is two who got the marks between the zero to five. another piece of the information we are observe is that the marks obtained by a student in an exam do not follow the normal distributions so it is not the bell shape so therefore distribution uh, uh, marks distribution is not the normally distribution so it the marks will does not follow the normality assumptions so therefore whatever techniques we are using the in the estimations or modeling based on the normal techniques so that cannot be applied here so what we will do we will use the some other techniques to modeling the this one okay so next is the scatter plot so scatter plots is what this is another in, uh, important plot and this is basically giving the basic information about the dependency between the two variables and whether the um, when x is increasing y is increasing or not x is decreasing so y is increasing or so if the both variable uh, 
either increase or decrease in the same same direction then we will get the positive kind of association if one is increasing other is decreasing or one is the de decreasing other is increasing then we will get the negative kind of association so this is the very important and this is more useful before making any regression analysis because on the basis of this uh, scatter plots we will decide whether we are going to do the simple linear regression or non linear regression so this is a very important technique for the regression analysis so what is its main it is mainly used to show the relationship between the pair of continuous variable this graph display the symbol at the x y coordinate of the data point of the pair variable scatter plot also also known as scatter diagram uh, scatter scatter gram or scatter chart the patterns of dots on the scatter plot allow us to determine the whether relationship or correlation exists between the two common variables or not if the relation exists then the scatter plots indicate the direction if the, its direction and whether it is a linear or curve linear so in the regression analysis this is very useful because before making any prediction and forecasting we have to identify the nature of data and the relationship between the data will allow you to the make the appropriate model otherwise if suppose you are having the data and just you are using the blind model then it will give you misleading results for example there may be if correlation coefficient between x and y may be zero but they may be not uncorrelated why this is the because the correlation coefficient only measures the linear relationship between two variables if there is a non linear relationship then our data will give you missing missing information so now we will make a scatter plots so use of scatter plots to check the following feature of data set examine the relationship between two variables check the outline and natural observation uh, non usual observation create the time series plot with the regular time independent data set evaluate the fit of the regression models so fit line plot says special types of the scatter plot that is the data points along with the fitted line to the simple linear this graph allow us to evaluate how well the models fit the data so what is the syntax for is the scatter plot in the okay it's in it's in a syntax in nothing this is the simple plots so simple codes is useful so for scatter plot just you use the plot plot is the code for the scatter plot in r x is the x variable x data set y is the y data set a main is the main uh, title of the graph x label y label and x limit, y limit you can give and you can give the types ticket what is the type Arhaya. type is scatter plots and axis you can also decide it the, on the basis of this uh, syntax you can make a scatter plot and this yeah. will give you this one kal kya padh ke aaya madam इधर तो यार बात तो सुन अखिल कॉल ला पार्टिसिपेंट्स प्लीज म्यूट योरसेल्फ हेलो सो टाइप पी प्लॉट्स का कैरेक्टर एच इज पॉइंट्स टाइप एल मींस प्लॉट्स लाइंस कनेक्टिंग टू ईच पॉइंट्स बी मींस बॉक्स प्लॉट्स बोथ लाइंस आर द कैरेक्टर्स सो इफ हियर द टाइप इज गिवन सो वंस यू विल चेंज द टाइप लाइक दिस वन सो योर ग्राफ विल बी चेंज सो पी विल बी गिव द पॉइंट्स And uh, yeah, no points on lines and this one. So you can see that this one. So using the match car data in the environment, this is already in build data. This one. So just you the data, just you put the data equal to match car data set. It will give you the basic information about the data. No, and uh, hello. Yes, sir. Continue. Huh. So we are just we have, this is a huge data set. So we are just only taking the two variables of uh, the two columns of this data set. So match car. This is uh, MPG. So this will give you the MPG value, and this is uh, HP value. And then this will give you the. So just we are taking uh, the first component is the X variable, and the second component uh, second component is the Y vari Y variable. So. Mills per gallon versus the house power. So X level is the mill per gallon and Y the house power and color is the this one and P just be a P a P are making making so the P will make you the this kind of graphs. This is the like as a small small bubbles. Okay. So X is on the mill per gallon and Y the house power. So from this data set, what do you be getting information as the Mill per gallon value increasing. Horsepower is 
Hello, what is the information about this data set? What is the information about this plot? As 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 the gallon value increases, mm. how power will decrease? That means it is, it is inversely it is inversely 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 related. It means x and y are negatively related. Inver yes. If you if you will calculate the correlation coefficient between these two variables, you will get the negative correlation coefficient. Okay. Yes. So at least it is giving the information. First one is the, the, the negative correlated, and its value becomes negative. So and you see that this is the this is not the linear kind of pattern. So at least you will not make any linear models. This is looks like as a curve linear, take a curve. So at least plotting the scatter plot, at least you will get the information, basic information about data. On the basis of that, this preliminary information, you will be able to decide whether you are going to choose a appropriate model or not. If you will not choose a appropriate model, you will get the misleading results. It, and misleading results are very dangerous in the practical applications. So adding a smooth curve to the scatter plots, so you can see that. What is the, just we are putting the, this one. So just since we are uh, making this one as a P, uh, this one. So what we are getting, this we are getting the at least some patterns. So, so but it's line not a linear. So it, it is the partial linear. Sometimes here is a linear, then it's uh, decreasing. This is the, so this is not, not linear pattern thing. Three dimensional scatter plots, you can also make a three dimensional scatter plot of the given data sets. So, this is the uh, for that one we have to use the library scatter plot 3D and scatter the plot this one first to three columns. So, we can make a 3D scatter plot of any given data set. So, this is the box plot. You can um, a box plot. Also known as a box and whisker plot. This is a graphical representation of the distribution of a data set. It provides a visual summary of key statistical features, allowing us to quickly understand the central tendency, spread, and uh, potential outlet in our data, in our data. The minimum and maximum value of the data are represented by the lines knowing the whisker extending from the end of the box. The median is the middle value of the data so where it is added. In a box plot, it is represented by the vertical lines using inside the box. The first quartile is the median of the lower half of the data set, and it is the 25th percentile and its lower boundary of the box. The third quartile the media, uh, is the media, uh, median of the upper quartile of the data set, and it's the 75 percent of the data set. So, interquartile is nothing but this is the Q3 minus Q1. So, what is the quartile? Quartile is nothing but there are four quartiles. Quartile means a point which divides the data in the segments. So first quartile means it divides the whole data in the first segment will have the 25% of the data and the remaining segment will have the 75% of the data. Q2 is nothing but this is the median. It will be in the two equal parts. And the third quartile is that one, we will have the 75% data in the left hand side and 25% data in the right hand side. Okay. Our interquartile is nothing but the third quartile minus first quartile value will give you the interquartile. So these are the measures of statistical measures. So what is the syntax? What is the box plot? Syntax of a box plot is nothing. Box plot, x is the data. This one is the yantas. This one the uh, Variable bits, names, main, and colors. So, see the vector of a RA formula. Data is the data frame. This is the label of the horizontal axis. When we say this one, logical or this one, many the used to this one. So we are not going into more details. We just we are just this one. So results in between the MPG and uh, this one is the in the match card is the this one. So MPG is derived by this one. Data is the match card data. MP is the first variable, sec, uh, CYL is the second variable, box plot will give you MP between the, this one, and this, this will give you the box plot. This is the known as box plot. This is giving the central tendency about the data, where the data is, how the data is scattered about the, its central value. So this is known as the box plot. A box plot with a specific color, you can also feel the specific color in the data, uh, the box plot. 
so you can use the this one the per, uh, you can use the colors he means the first for first plot we are using the green colors for second we are using the yellow one for third one we are using so using the r programming or the r software you can produce a variety of the graphs or plots in a more fascinating manner and this is the alpha box plot with the notch and specific colors so box plot is nothing but this is also box plot this is a different kind of box plot this is the your simple but if you are making the more in the more fascinating way this is the box plot with notch and specific colors so, so you can give this one ticket so this is for what if you will not see equals to true then it will get, you will get the box plot of a like this one and uh, normal qq plots this is uh, quantile quantile plots it is used for check the normality assumption in the data so this is very important if you are dealing with any uh, uh, that is sampling techniques where the exact sampling techniques are uh, assumptions is required so first we have to check the whether the data is following the normality assumption or so this is the quantile quantile plot so quantile quantile plots is nothing but just we are plotting the theoretical quantile with, between the uh, uh, empirical quantiles so data quantile is the empirical quantile and theoretical quantile is already corresponding to normal uh, quantile so if the our uh, empirical quantile and uh, theoretical quantile the quantile are coincide are very close to each other then we will say that the data is the normal otherwise data is not normal so it is known as the normal probability plots or quantile quantile plots it designed to assess whether the data follows the normal distribution simple to use relying on the visual inspection of the data points if the data points uh, form a straight line it indicates that the, our data is the normal distribution useful for checking the normality of residual in the regression analysis so this is very useful technique so what is the syntax in the r its syntax in the r is nothing but a qq line x y and colors so x and y coordinates are and colors is find the colors so, so nothing but this is the qq qq line is the command for that one in the r and you can see that suppose we are generating the 100 uh, 1200 sample from the normal distributions so these are the uh, samples and just you put the qq line x colors dark green so you will get the this kind of so since this is the straight line is the theoretical quantile and the, this is the uh, your dotted uh, dotted plots are the or our the empirical quantiles so since theoretical quantiles and uh, empirical quantiles are both are the um, close to each other are falling on the same line so therefore this data the netted data set is the normal data set okay so this is very useful so okay so if you want any more questions you can ask otherwise i have the this uh, whole information about the basics of r programming i can share with you and this will you uh, give you basic information uh, what is the basic safar how to use the descriptive statistics fitting of univariate distribution linear regression generalized linear models every information is given in this pdf with examples and uh, theory as well as examples so you can use the, uh, this file for your uh, future exploration so every information is given uh, we have prepared this uh, uh, for this this one so you can see that uh, graphical representation of data will uh, like this one so everything is given with the several examples you can use so any question you can see that like yeah. this one sir so mind uh, what is the uh, in terms of uh, research work hello uh, i am audible yeah yeah, yeah. So in terms Please. of research work uh, at what situation we use R programming and uh, rather than uh, Python programming? For which purpose? Uh, 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 suppose then the bar chart and pie chart, all, all are, will be uh, doing in uh, Python also. So what yeah, is the yeah, main yeah, yeah, yeah. difference between them? Uh, if you are uh, having the computer science background, okay? Then I would suggest yeah, you. Sir, you... I, I'm both. I, I'm a statistic debate statistic as well as concerned both. Oh. I've done so uh, I, I'm telling you okay, why R is the more preferable in the statistical analysis than the 
पाइथन ठीक सो पाइथन इज मोर ओरिएंटेड टू द कंप्यूटर साइंस ठीक है बट इफ यू आर डीलिंग विद द सपोज यू आर डोंट बिलिंग टू राइट द रिग्रेस कोड आर यूजर फ्रेंडली कोड सो फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स एट द रिसर्च लेवल यू विल गेट द इनबिल्ड कोड फॉर द एनी प्रॉब्लम इन द आर बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द वर्ड इज यूजिंग द नाउड एज आर एज ए स्टैटिस्टिकल मोर स्टैटिस्टिकल सॉफ्टवेयर रिग्रेस स्टैटिस्टिकल सॉफ्टवेयर दैन द पाइथन so i would suggest that you use the r because r, r is the everywhere available and the most of uh, statistical analysis more development every day is happening in this one so at the research level if you are more rigorous in the statistical your research is more oriented towards the statistics so you use the r software okay python is also same but python is following this one okay python is has a different uh, that aspect that is more related to the financial aspects but either you make in the r either you make in the python graphs will be at the very beginning level there will be no difference but at the higher level there is slight difference so we use prefer to r boom to r ha ha both are the same syntax is the similar nothing much more okay if you know the r you can use the um, python you can know the python you can use the r okay but in r a lot of in build codes are available for the more fascinating statistical analysis I, and i will say yes. every every information is given in this with theory as well as example okay so this is, this is this is a complete note for any any beginner any other question okay thank you sir thank you thank you participants if you have any other query you can put your question in chat box or you can unmute yourself so someone ask us kindly share the resources us definitely we will share and uh, okay thank you so no other questions no 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 i does think does anyone no have any question no questions okay okay so on behalf of organizing committee for this two week uh, faculty development program i would like to thank our speaker for sharing his valuable time and knowledge with us and uh, the session was very informative and very interesting and i hope everyone has enjoyed the session and learned a lot sir has explained very well all the basic commands in our software to uh, pre- represent statistical data graphically and sir has told us about the use of scatter plot in regression analysis and thank you sir for uh, highlighting all the aspects of this uh, r2 thank you thank you our software tools. thank you sir thank you once again so this is token thank of appreciation for sir thank you sir thank you thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you thank you kirti thank thank you sir finally uh, i would like to thank all of you for attending today's session your participation and engagement have been greatly appreciated as we come to the end of our today's last session of the fdp we would like to express our gratitude to all the participants for their active involvement participation and insightful contribution we hope that you found the sessions informative and engaging we hope that this program has been beneficial to you and that you will continue to apply the learning in your work we wish you all the best in your future endeavors thank you all so within 2 minutes we will start our valedictory session
Yes, Kirti. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. okay. So, uh, may I request to uh, Professor Meher Chandji uh, to take uh, the feedback of the, uh, the participants? Good noon, all of you. Uh, dear participants, the session, the uh, technical session is over now. And I request to the participants who want to share their views about this ongoing faculty development program. So this is open feedback from the participant who is willing. Uh, you can uh, unmute your mic and put your views about this ongoing faculty development program. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I'm Gaurav Shirasta. And uh, thank you all the organizers for uh, organizing such a great uh, FDP for us. Uh, uh, we are uh, all, I think, academician, uh, either in research or student. Uh, uh, I'm very happy. I'm very glad. Thank you to uh, uh, for uh, organizing such a FDP because uh, it helped me a lot. I'm a, I'm a basic beginner in a Python and I have no knowledge in R, uh, basically. So that's why it's, uh, it's helped me a lot. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, especially I'm interested in mathematical part because I have a, a mathematical background, mathematical statistics in a UG and PG and also done MCA and now I'm PhD first thing. So uh, uh, mathematical portion, practical approach is very good, sir. I'm very thankful to all the speakers, keynote speakers, uh, for uh, doing a practical session, online practical sessions, which will help you a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your valuable suggestions. Uh, it's anything? my session. There is my session, sir. Please uh, arrange an, uh, uh, another FDP for uh, image processing. Because uh, my field uh, is uh, image processing uh, in uh, image classification and uh, information retrieval. So, uh, either in computer vision, you have uh, organized, uh, that's also available for me. Yes, uh, this program is in the sequence, and very soon we will launch this uh, program on image processing. Uh, because we have the sequence of programs throughout the year. Yeah, thank yeah. you, sir. Any more feedback from other participants, please? <laughs> Any other participants who want to express his views about this ongoing faculty development program, please don't hesitate. You can unmute your mic. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is Emmanuel Mbrenga from Zambia. Great. I'm a uh, uh, hundred next. Uh, I can say this to or any. Uh, I have come to understand why for uh, Africa and other nations the through the the learning process that you can place. I have learned a lot uh, to which uh, you're bringing up uh, uh, such kind uh, from all the lectures. I have learned of things I get so much meet me and thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Any other participant? Uh, uh, Kirti, please uh, ask uh, uh, to the next proceed for the address. Okay, sir. So without taking much of your time, now I request Dr. Meherchan, sir, Department of Physics and Mathematics, Baba Farid College, Bhatinda, and President MTTA, Fazilika, in India to present report of this two week faculty development program on data science and scientific computing. Over to you, sir. 
thank you kirti kirti for uh, inviting me for this uh, feedback uh, and the report of the event uh, first of all good morning all of you and at some places there is noon at uh, some places there is evening so because the event is uh, international and uh, uh, different time zone is there so good morning uh, good noon and good evening to all of you all the participant uh this event uh, the collaborative effort of uh, central university of punjab batinda and uh, prima university jaipur nexus university south africa bawfrid college batinda and methodic thinking foundation resulted in a highly successful two week diploma on data science and uh, scientific computing the event took place from january 3rd to 16th providing a comprehensive platform for academia from diverse regions to delve into the realm of cutting edge technologies the inauguration on january 3rd set a promising tone for the pfdp dr manoj kumar uh, pro president of prima university jaipur delivered an insightful opening address dr javed ahmed khan Dean of Basic Science at Bawfrid College, Batinda, India, extend a warm welcome, and uh, uh, President of Nexus University, South Africa, provided an overview about the faculty term program, emphasizing its uh, importance in the field of uh, data science and scientific computing. Mm -hmm. uh, the very first speaker was Professor Valentina from uh, Romania, and uh, she covered the set at the uh, stage. with a talk on artificial intelligence and machine learning and introduction to the data science so all the speakers uh, during the 14 days they were their uh, respective talk on each area and uh, all the uh, sessions were covered very successful and all the content which was being presented during all these sessions uh, was is very uh, informative knowledgeable to all the participant and during these sessions uh, we uh, assign some assignment to all the participant they submitted all these uh, assignment timely and the most important thing is that uh, the entire content which are being presented uh, during the session and the recordings of each session is also available for the participant uh, after the activity along with the Uh, along with the, uh, this is an open platform where uh, all the technical questions from the participant has been discussed and uh, build the network among the participant. So uh, this is two week faculty tournament program on data science and scientific computing was an exploratory collaboration of academic institutions fostering knowledge exchange and enhancing the. skills of the participant the diverse range of topics covered by esteemed speaker around the world provided a holistic view of the field the event not only facilitated learning but also paved the way for future collaborations and research and diverse in the ever evolving domains of the data science and scientific computing in this activity uh, there are uh, about uh, seven countries participant uh, have taken participate uh, during this session and most of the participant are faculty members and researchers and i hope that the content which we present and all the speakers are really very informative knowledgeable to all the participant so once again uh, thanks to all the participant and uh, showing your interest in this uh, ongoing faculty tour program thank you very much over to you uh, kirti ma'am yes thank you sir we are extremely grateful to you for organizing such an ed education activity now it's time for the valedictory address for this i would like to invite professor ramakrishna usurika sir dean in charge academics central university of punjab bathinda india for the closing address over to you sir uh, so good afternoon to all um so this conference organized by four institutions and one uh, a 
Math Tech Foundation. Uh, itself uh, speaks volume that five institutions are collaborating to organize. And I was told that 120 uh, participants are participating from all over India and uh, a few foreign countries. So uh, the topic is very, uh, I think, interesting and relevant for today's research. Uh, so the data science and scientific computing is uh, not just limited to those who work in computational sciences or math. Uh, this is nowadays required for many of the uh, sciences, for science programs, because there's huge amount of uh, volume of data that is being generated, especially in life sciences, and uh, how to analyze this data and how to use it uh, for uh, applying the data for different problems and issues, whether it is health science or whether agriculture or environment, or it may be some basic uh, uh, issues that are uh, related to many of the other fields. And uh, uh, this particular um, area is of course relevant to many of the computational needs, computer science, mathematics, and all these areas. So. This is a great opportunity, I think, for all the participants who got uh, to learn uh, these all techniques. And maybe there are some of you who have some basics and you are learning advanced and some maybe starting from basics. Now the real challenge or application of uh, completing this program is how you will apply this. Now, we would like to see many of you, if not all of you, to apply this in your research and get something productive. By uh, productive, what I mean is it can be publications, maybe related to your degrees or uh, some product coming out of it, or um, if you're working in a, some, some company or something, or in future, uh, make it useful for everybody, including society. How we, this will uh, contribute? Hello? general public who is there in this area. Hello? So you have to make this FDP useful now for the public good. So how many of you will use it is the real question. It is not that I com completed FDP program and for your friend, yes. it is useful. Just, I don't know why. Because they said to me, no, if you want to build skills, a leader skill and export to the really good. That button is empty. Not went out. Pick out on that house? No, no, no. Maybe they have photo the shit there. Okay, so sorry, it got disconnected, my computer. So I'm using here from Dr. Deep Singh. Uh, so you all can hear me, right? Yes. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Audible. Yes, yes, Am I audible? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Sir, again, you are disconnected. Sir, you are disconnected now. Kirti, I am audible. Uh, sir, is disconnected. Uh, I think there is network issue. Okay. okay. So, uh, thank you so much. Sir. Okay, there are there is problems going on here with the net, I guess. So I, I think I will yes, conclude sir. my. Uh, <laughs> you are audible now. 
Ah, okay, okay. So there is some net problem here going on in the university. Two computers I got disconnected. Now we are connected again. So I was saying uh, uh, you all need to utilize this knowledge what you gained for uh, advancing your research and getting something useful out of this. Okay. Uh, thank you all. So we all appreciate everybody involved here, those who conducted this uh, uh, workshop, especially the resource persons and all the uh, staff and students, uh, faculty who are associated in uh, supporting this. Without the support staff, nothing will move here. So and doing it online again is a challenge. So thank you all. Thank you, sir, for your valuable suggestions and kind words. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Swati Ma'am, Dean International Relations, Purnima University, Jaipur, for closing address of the FDP. Over to you, Ma'am. Oh, am I audible? Yes, Ma'am, you are audible. So, I I would like to thank the participants for having completed this successfully and would like to congratulate all the participation participating universities for their wonderful support in terms of resource persons, academic support, and the person who has been taking the responsibility, Dr. Mehrchan, for his uh, kind guidance and uh, uh, energy that he channelizes in organizing such events. Punima University truly believes that these events are very important. Collaborative efforts are needed. And in times to come, all academic support and initiatives will be encouraged by us. So congratulations to everyone once again. And thank you so much. Swati ma'am, uh, Kirti ma'am, over to you. Kirti is there. Kirti ma'am, was I audible, sir, may sir? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay, sir. Kirti, over to you. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your nice and invaluable insights about the FTP. Wow, finally, I get to speak. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. My name is Homoto Muratolo. I'm the president of Nexus University. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can anyone hear, can everyone hear me? Am I clear? Yes, uh, you are audible. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm so excited. You know, congratulations to everyone. You know, finally, the last day, I do not believe it. You know, so our doctors, our professors, they did an exceptional, you know, work. And we are so excited. We are so excited for this beautiful and wonderful opportunity. You know, Dr. Chant, you've done, you've actually upgraded yourself because, you know, our graphic students, they're very, I mean, you know, on, in my space, um, we don't only focus. Focused on 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 South Africa, we've got you know um, like my students are from all over the world. So you've also got your your, your Kenyans and you know one of the Zambians actually um, our students spoke you know and he gave thanks. So this just actually shows you know how important this program was and how far it's going to take them, especially in our global market. You know, I think this is something that's very, very important um, because now in this program, we don't only focus, we're not only focusing in our countries. However, we can just spread our wings, you know, and just, you know, go to other countries, um, learn, you know, implement what we've learned and so forth. So it's easy. You know, I always say that it's always easy, um, you know, to, to share 
ideas with different countries. It makes, you know, it, it will make the world a better place. I'm all about, we also, with the Nexus University, we all about, you know, bringing change, um, you know, assisting the underprivileged, you know, and then people that are willing to learn. We have so many people that are willing to learn that, you know, want education. However, they don't have means, you know, to 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 actually, you know, get or, or, or go after their dreams and so forth. However, with this program, you literally, you know, gave them their hope. I mean, this is an exceptional program. You know, this certificate participants, this certificate has value. Please use it to your good cause. Please use it to a good cause. Okay, and lastly, before I don't want to take much of your time, um, I just want to read something quickly. And, um, you know, because I always feel that sometimes when you speak, you tend to forget, you know, on what you actually want to say. So in most cases, I usually, you know, just uh, draft, you know, um, something and just to, 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 to say whatever that I want to say fully, because, you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, finish um, um, speaking and then the next thing I feel so bad to say, no, I didn't do this. I left this person out and so forth. Okay, so here it goes. We are honored as the Nexus University and um, we welcome each and every one of, of you, um, you know, in this program that we've actually completed, which is very, very nice. And then this collaborative effort was jointly yes, and organized by the Central University of Punjab, Batinda, India. And then, you know, our partners, Purnima University, uh, Jaipur, India, Baba Farid College, Batinda, India, Math Tech Banking Foundation, Vasilka, Punjab, India, and Nexus University, which is actually us. Uh, this is a testament to the shared commitment of our institutions to foster excellence in education and research. Our vision, and which has been achieved, uh, was to equip our participants with a profound understanding of data science concepts, scientific computing, and techniques. Now, we strongly encourage, you know, participants to provide hands-on experience to our communities. That's very, very important. Can we please share? Can we please share, share, share? Okay, to our schools, to our institutions, and to those who are underprivileged, you know, and are keen to learn. We need to expand this knowledge through sessions, you know, the coding, the real-world projects, and we aim to provide, you know, an enriching learning experience. We would like to express our gratitude to our patrons, Professor R. Pitiwari, Vice Chancellor of Central University of Punjab, Batinda, India, Dr. Garmet Singh, Dwayil, Chairman of Baba Farid, Group of Institution, Batinda, India, and um, myself and the participants. You know, and, and then lastly but not least, Dr. Suresh Pardi, President of Pornina um, University, Rajasthan in India. Your visionary leadership and our unwavering support has been instrumental in shaping the trajectory of this program. Heartfelt appreciation as well goes to our conveners, coordinators, and organizing committee members who have dedicated their time to ensure the success of this wonderful program. And then in closing, as we embark on this long and exciting educational journey, we would encourage each participant to actively you know, engage, collaborate, and make the most of this unique learning opportunity. May our upcoming programs serve you know, our communities, as previously mentioned. And lastly, but not least, to our participants, we would have you know, this program. It wouldn't have been possible without your support. Um, we thank you so, so much for taking part in this initiative, you know, for your assignments, majority have actually completed the assignments, the feedback, thank you so much. You're making this possible. And please, let's not forget, you're not only making it possible for yourselves, but you're making it possible for the next generation that's actually coming. This is very, very special, all right? We couldn't have had such a fantastic time without you, yes. And thank you for joining us at the Data Science and Scientific Program. Your support is truly appreciated and we're thrilled to have you. Thanks again for making it so special. <laughs> My name is Komoto Moratolo, President at Nexus University. There's more programs coming. We're going to grab them and let's learn. Thank you so much. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are so grateful to you ma'am for sharing your nice and valuable insights for this faculty development program now moving forward i would like to invite dr javed sir 
Dean Basic Sciences, Baba Farid College, Bathinda, for closing address of the FTP. Over to you, sir. A very good afternoon to everybody and Namaskar. So I hope uh, most of the people have already spoke a lot about the FTP and then the participant and the contribution made by Dr. Meher Chand and his team and all the other uh, partners from Nexus University. So uh, I'm sure for last 14 days, there has been some changes in your brain. So can uh, all the people I think feel can change? It's very difficult to you know identify the changes in the brain, but it's a learning concept. So when you learn, so a lot of interconnection between neurons happen and that will be only strengthened. So whatever you learn and the synapses form in your brain, so it's only be strengthened if you use this knowledge, whatever you learn in this FDP. So one aspect that Vushrika sir has already told, you translate into a research work. That is the one thing. The other thing that uh, uh, I think 120 people have participated in FDP and most of you all are present on LinkedIn. So try to connect with each other. See what you learned is the same thing you learned because uh, you know that uh, sometimes the teacher or, or, or the resource person speaks something and you miss out something. Although Dr. Mahesh and then his team has shared with FDB, you discuss it. When you discuss your synapses or interconnection between neurons strengthen and that way, you know, you get more learning. That is the first part. You start working on a problems which can be solved through scientific computing. As as Vishika sir also told that in health sciences, a lot of problems are there. Like a lot of data is uh, there where you can analyze using scientific computing and produce a result which can lead to treatment or diagnostic and other uh, aspects in the health sciences. Same thing with the other problem in transport, in logistic, and similar in other fields. That is the second aspect. So first is connecting connecting all the people around in the FDP. So list is already with you. Try to search and then try to connect with this thing and try to discuss whatever you learn. Second, writing a research paper or at least you start a review paper with the, all the partners in this FDP, or you find the best people or connect with the resource person, which uh, Dr. Mahesh and already have shared with you list and try to ask questions. So these are the way you strengthen. The third part, which I will suggest that <clears throat> in the classroom, because normally all of us are, uh, are professors or, you know, somewhere or the other involved in teaching. So try to, you know, see something in 14 days, something new you have learned and translate that to the students. So in third way, you improve your interconnection. And that is what my, uh, you know, uh, suggestion. I hope everybody has been uh, followed uh, whatever I'm, I'm saying and try to work on this. Otherwise, this 14 days will, only outcome will be a piece of paper, you know, some paper which, uh, or paper or the online e-certificate, Dr. Mehaj and his team is, will be providing. So it will remain a piece of paper in your, uh, you know, uh, a file, like for example, uh, I was just uh, going yesterday in my study room and looking after whatever I learned, whatever FDP I have done. So it's uh, around about 500 days of you know FDP during all my 20 years of career in teaching. But there are uh, certain things which I was able to translate to the next level through the uh, either resource person in FDP or in classroom. And then only it was useful. Otherwise, I'm telling you that this 14 days you have wasted. And I'm sure this, 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 uh, you, you're all precious and you know, people, all of us complain that about the time management that it's a time, we don't have a time. So time is because you're not utilizing 24 hour is more than enough to learn something new or implement it. Don't target too many things. So this 14 days only be useful if you follow all, uh, these things. So I'll not take you much time and I'm sure we will be meeting. Uh, this is a second time, uh, uh, or, or I think third time. We are meeting in this. There are certain people I can see which is common in other FDPs also, which are already connected with me also. So keep building your network, keep learning from each other. All of us has some or the other new things to teach the world and take it to the forward, uh, forward level and, uh, you know, uh, try to utilize all of your time, you know, judicially. So once again, uh, all the person, Swati, Komagu, uh, Kirti, Dr. Meher Chand and the, uh, Dr. Bushika, Dr. Deep uh, Singh in, from Central University. So all the partners, it's a very big thing. And I'm sure next time we'll be meeting uh, physically and we'll have the session and FDP planned uh, this thing. And we'll, we'll, we'll try to see that this FDP, all the FDP run here at uh, Baba Farid Group of Institution will lead to 
one publication also. So that not only the certificate you will take, you will take one publication also with the FDP and also learning will uh, move. So once again, uh, thank you and uh, keep learning. That's what the quality of a teacher. If a teacher sees to learn something new, he failed as a teacher. Or uh, you cannot inculcate among your students that you know you're not listening to me or you're not learning something. Things. So as a teacher, once you start imbibe into the learning concept, you will be a great teacher. So thank you very much and uh, see you soon. Thank you, sir, for your valuable suggestions and kind words. It means a lot to us. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Deep Singh, sir, head of the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Central University of Punjab, Bhatinda, to propose vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Dr. Deep, sir. Uh, Dr. Deep Singh, you are not audible. Dr. Deep Singh, please check your mic. Yes, sir. I am a devil now. I am a devil now. Is it fine? Is it fine? Is it fine? Not properly okay. audible. So, can I continue now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Not properly? Please continue. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Uh, so I think because of some network issues, uh, the, there is some uh, voice problem also. So sorry for that. Um, let me uh, uh, start with the, the beginning. Uh, good afternoon to all present here and joining through online mode. Uh, once again, I welcome you all in this valedictory session of uh, two weeks international faculty development program on data science and scientific computing jointly organized by esteemed institutions. Central University of Punjab, Batinda, Punima University, Jaipur, Nexus University, South Africa, Bava. Again, sir, uh, your mic is muted and I think a network issue. Hello. Uh, please make your uh, network stable, sir, please. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Now it is aud aud audible. Okay. On behalf of Central University of Punjab and Organizing Committee of Faculty Development Program and my own behalf, I, Dr. Deep Singh, I to thank all the participating institutes for joining this collaborative event and this active involvement to me. I hope all enjoyed and got benefit out of this FDP. 
it is matter of think electrons of event uh, Huh. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Thank you, Kirti. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would like to express event, Professor, uh, Vice Chancellor, Honorable Professor, Central University of Punjab who is a motivating and guiding force behind this academic event. I express my sincere thanks to other patrons of the event, Dr. Gurmeet Singh Dhaliwal, Chairman Baba Farid, Group of Institutions, Batinda, Mr. Ms. Komoto Morotolo, President, Nexus University, South Africa, Dr. Suresh Padi, President, Purnima University, Rajasthan, I am uh, thankful for your uh, guidance and uh, uh, help during this uh, faculty development program. I extend my heartfelt thank to uh, co-patrons of the program, Professor Ramakrishna Busirika, Dean in Charge Academics, and Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Thakur, sir, Dean Basic, Dean School of Basic uh, Sciences, Central University of Punjab, uh, Professor Manoj Gupta, Pro President, Punima University, Rajasthan. Dr. Manish Vansal, Principal Baba Farid College, Batinda. Dr. Chandni Kriplani, Registrar, Konima University, Rajasthan. I also extend my thanks to the convener of this FDP, Dr. Swati Gokru, Dean International Relations, Konima University, Rajasthan. Dr. Deep Singh, Department of Mathematics, Central University of Punjab. Professor Gauri Sankar, Department of Mathematics and Aesthetics, Central University of Punjab. Dr. Meher Chand, Faculty of Mathematics, Baba Farid College, and President of MTT of Fazilka. Dr. Ade Kunel uh, Obo Lobby, Nexus University, South Africa. I am really thankful for your contribution in this FDP. I also thank co-conveners of the FDP, Dr. Anup Kumar, Dr. Jasbinder Pal, Dr. Har uh, Harman Preet Singh Kapoor, Dr. Jasmeet Kaur, Dr. Gurmesh Singh Sindhu for his contribution and support during this program. I also extend my thanks to co-coordinators uh, of the faculty development program, Professor Javed Ahmed Khan, Dean Basic Sciences, Baba Farid College, Batinda, Dr. Manoj Kumar, Department of Mathematics, uh, Department of Computer Science, uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar University, Lucknow, Dr. Sachin Kumar, Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Central University of Punjab, Dr. Asok Kumar Pathak, uh, Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Central University of Punjab, Ms. Monica Sarma, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, Pune University. Dr. Anuradha Raheza, Faculty of Computer Engineering, Pune University. Dr. Yogita Sarma, Executive Member, Math Tech Thinking Foundation. So, thank you all for your extended support in this international faculty development program. I express my heartful thank to our esteemed speakers, resource persons who have shared their valuable knowledge and expertise with us in this FDP. Professor D.K. Lobial, former Dean, School of Computer Science, Jawaharlal Nehru University, JNU, Delhi. Professor Dr. Valentina E. Valas, Faculty of Engineering, Department of Automation and Applied Informatics, uh, University of Arad, Romania. Professor Dr. Pooja, Dean of Engineering and Technology, Sarda University. Professor Dr. Amandeep Kaur, Doc, uh, Department of Computer Science and Technology, Central University of Punjab. Dr. Intiram Raza Khan, academician at Jamia Hamdard University, Delhi. Dr. Ajay Kunteta, professor and dean, faculty of computer science and engineering, Purnima University, Jaipur. Dr. Asok Kumar Pathak, Department of Mathematics, Statistics, Central University of Punjab. Dr. Harman Preet Singh Kapoor, Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Central University of Punjab. Dr. Prayas Sarma, Department of Statistics, Baba Sahib Ambedkar University, Lucknow. Mr. Harish Kumar Pamnani, Faculty of Computer Science, uh, Center of Excellence, Machine Learning Application of, for Society, Purnima University. Dr. Upinder Kaur, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Akal University, Batinda. Dr. Salu Gupta, Department of Computer Science, Baba Farid College, Batinda.
I also extend my thanks to the chairpersons of the sessions, Dr. Meher Chand, Dr. R.S. Gupta, Dr. Durbesh Kumar Verma, Dr. Atul Gaur, Dr. Sally Verma, Dr. Anuradha Raheza, and uh, if uh, I forget any other name, please forgive me Why here in the series. Uh, I uh, I the key person uh, who coined and came up with the idea of this international FDP, that is Professor Meher Chand, President MTT of Antiquity. Sir, please keep quoting you. Sir, you are not audible. I extend my heartful thank to all the energetic and young participants of this two-week FDP for their patience, learning, and cooperation during the program. I expect this FDP was an engaging and enlightening experience for all of us. The event was productive and informative to all the participants. It was great academic journey where we have exchanged our ideas and knowledge among us. Your active participation in this event motivate us to continue work in the same direction to organize more such activities in either online or offline mode. Once again, I thank you all for making this event successful. As Professor Busirika and Professor Javed Ahmed Khan Sir mentioned that the learning is meaningful only if you are utilizing this somewhere in teaching and research. So I hope you all are uh, all will uh, utilize this by taking it in this same direction. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Over Thank to you. dear Kirti. Thank you, sir, for your valuable suggestion and insightful address. Now. Uh, we would like to express our profound gratitude to each and every one of you for giving up your important time to help make this FTP a success. Your enthusiastic involvement in the activity encourages us to keep going in the same direction and plan additional events of the same nature, whether online or offline. So once again, thank you all for joining us in this valedictory session. Now, before moving to the final step, I kindly request to all to please switch on your videos or the cameras for the group photograph. Once again, thank you all for making this academic activity a resounding success. Dr. Mehrchen, sir. Uh, yes, uh, thank you uh, for engaging all these things. Uh, dear participant, as uh, regularly uh, you know, uh, we have sent all the feedbacks and uh, assignments. So today, uh, last feedback form will be sent on your email address, as well as uh, uh, we will share on the WhatsApp group shortly after some time. And your certificate of participation, we will uh, send through your email address uh, within uh, five days, okay? Uh, because we have to evaluate all the uh, your assignments, as well as feedback and attendance. And after that, we will send your certificate of participation on your registered email address. So you have to wait uh, maximum five days. Thank you. Now it is time to end the session.
ओके सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू टू ऑल थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू एंड कीप इन टच ये कौन है नया नहीं हो थैंक यू सर ये बेटा नॉर्मल नहीं हो थैंक यू I ask you to the prem uh, please spread uh, the recording. Yes, you can end the meeting now.